southward course of this jet fighter, passing over the temporary quarters of the United States Air Force Academy at Lowry Air Force Base, Denver, has a special significance to these cadets. In six minutes, this jet will be skirting Pikes Peak, close to the site of the permanent Air Force Academy home. Ever since pioneer days, men have been lured to the mile-high region below Pikes Peak, to its beautiful surroundings and bracing mountain air. Colorado Springs was settled a century ago and has grown through the years. Thousands come here every year to enjoy nature's grandeur, unfolded in such varied forms as the rich sandstone monoliths in the Garden of the Gods. The cool sparkle and muffled roar of Seven Falls, one of a number of noted waterfalls in the Colorado Springs region. The rolling terrain, which extends across the entire eastern slope of the Rocky Mountains. Within this area of rugged beauty, six miles north of Colorado Springs, lies the permanent site of the new Air Force Academy. Here in the shadow of the Rampart Range, proud mesas, dotted with ponderosa pine, spruce, and scrub oak, jut out between verdant valleys. The Cheyenne and Arapaho Indians lived out their primitive culture on this land, the early settlers hacked out patches of the soil for cultivation near their log cabins. They were followed by today's ranches, large and small, spread through the valleys. But now, man's will and know-how is being imposed on this area on a gigantic scale to provide a permanent home for the newly created United States Air Force Academy, a community of 2,640 cadets and 3,000 man school staff and support complement. Seeking an inspirational setting in keeping with the proud tradition established by America's airmen in decades past, the Air Force's Site Selection Commission saw the Rampart Range as a fitting backdrop for its new service home. They saw opportunity here for exercising architectural ingenuity in blending nature's beauty with the Air Force Academy's needs. An opportunity to transform 17 and a half thousand acres into a national shrine worthy of the world's leading air power. To carry out this concept, the Air Force, in 1954, appointed one of the largest architectural engineering firms in the country. And together with the Air Force Academy Construction Agency, the necessary series of preliminary surveys was begun. Topographical surveys of the varying terrain to establish the best possible plan in laying out building facilities and airfield, roads, and utility lines. Soil tests for texture and moisture content, along with climate, water, and drainage studies. Compaction tests on local soils to determine their load-bearing characteristics. Laboratory analysis on soils, water, and construction cohesives, as well as strength tests on concrete mixtures and other construction materials. Panels of various surface materials were erected on the site of granite, marble, and other finishes to guide the architects in achieving aesthetic harmony on exterior surfaces of buildings, as well as courtyards and walkways. Gradually, a master plan was evolved which made the most efficient use of the five valleys sloping gently down from the Rampart Range. Each of the valleys is separated by low wooded ridges of varying height. The rugged terrain at the northwest corner, just below Cathedral Rock, was set aside as the ground training maneuver area. 
The academic area is located on the broadest mesa just south of the maneuver area. Now, under extensive grading activities, this cadet school and living area is scheduled for completion in the fall of 1958. Further south will be two housing areas for the families of the Air Force support personnel. High on Douglas Mesa, centrally located to best serve the community, will be a shopping and recreation center. In the southeast corner of the site, on the floor plain of the Monument Creek Valley, was plotted an airfield with an 8,800-foot runway. Here, to provide safe approach landing zone, three miles of the Denver-Colorado Springs Highway will be moved a few hundred yards east. The Academy's service and warehouse supply facilities will also be located here, close to railroad and highway. First, the land had to be purchased and negotiations made for over 150 parcels of property from the huge Lehman Ranch to farms and home sites of varying size, scattered throughout the area, in Douglas Valley, on Dead Man's Creek, in the Monument Creek Plain, from the opulent Pine Valley Country Club to the modest Baha'i School, the crumbling whistle stop of Houston, where long ago the bellow of market-bound longhorns proclaimed its lively status on the Santa Fe Railroad, will give way to the smooth green of the Academy approach area. The creation of an enduring monument on so gigantic a scale is a long-time enterprise. First, thousands of tons of equipment must be brought in by contractors. Heavy equipment of every type must be marshaled at the Academy site for the Herculean task of taming the raw lands preparatory to actual construction of roads, utility lines, and buildings. Rocks and boulders must be dislodged by bulldozer and dynamite from mountainside and valley floor and hauled away for crushing at plants located on the site to provide aggregate for concrete and material for the sub-base of roads. Thousands of tons of earth must be moved and relocated. With care taken to stockpile valuable topsoil for subsequent landscaping. Roadways must be prepared, not only for the eventual complex net of academy arteries to encircle and bind together the different areas of the school reservation, but initially to handle the vast volume of construction traffic. Already, more than 20 of the eventual 70 main road miles are in use, completed down to the base course, with the heavy construction trucks and equipment pounding the roadbed into firm compaction. The surface of the roadways will not be laid on until all water, sewer, drainage, and other utility lines are completed. Alongside the new roadbeds and crisscrossing the site, other crews have placed the coated steel pipes of the potable water lines, as well as the vitrified clay piping of the sewer system. Of all the basic problems facing the engineers, most critical was the procurement of a several million gallon daily water supply for the Academy's needs. the area enjoys an annual rainfall of 17 and a half inches, most of it falls during April, May, July, and August. During these periods of heavy rainfall, the ground becomes quickly saturated, with much of the water lost through runoff to the plains toward the east. Major source for the Academy's water supply entailed a prodigious undertaking. up the face of the mountain, a 390-foot tunnel was bored and blasted through bedrock to connect with a major water line recently completed by the city of Colorado Springs, bringing water from the snowpack runoff on the reverse west slope. Storage for this water is being prepared through the construction of three reservoirs, each capable of holding 800,000 gallons. These concrete and steel tanks are spotted at strategic high points on the reservation. Supplementing this reservoir supply will be well water from the underground water table on the site. 
heart of the new Air Force Institution, shown here in model form, will be the academic area, developed by the joint enterprise of the country's outstanding architects and planning engineers. This educational complex was designed expressly for the tight, military, round-the-clock living and training routine demanded of the cadets. Although the academy grounds are designed to best set off its dress parade beauty against the Rockies, the perimeter roads for visitors will be so routed as to ensure the privacy required by workaday cadet activities. The area's buildings, gleaming white, rising from broad green lawns, will be of the most modern construction and efficient design. Dominating the campus will be dormitories, centrally situated within 10 minutes marching time of all the cadets' basic activities, education, athletics, worship, and recreation. In the cadet quarters, each class group will be housed together around the courtyard. Nearby are the education buildings, the scientific laboratories, lecture halls, and classrooms, furnished with the latest facilities and apparatus equal to the appointments of the most modern university, including a closed-circuit television system. The Academy Library will be stocked with 100,000 volumes, including a specialized collection in the field of aviation. Athletic facilities will be set up for a year-round schedule in both intramural and intercollegiate sports. Both on the extensive playing fields and in the physical education building, the cadets will balance their strict military and study routine with competitive participation in both major and minor sports. The Cadet Social Center will contain a theater large enough to seat the entire cadet corps of 2,640, a post exchange and recreation facilities, including a ballroom for cadet dances and other social functions. Looming over this harmonious complex of campus buildings will be the chapel, dedicated to the spiritual life of the cadet. The final form of this edifice has not yet been selected. A test building was constructed overlooking the academic area to determine the most satisfactory and durable construction for the cadet quarters. The building consists of two dormitory rooms with connecting hallway. Each room is constructed of different materials to test heating, lighting, and acoustical properties. This building is the current living quarters of four Air Force engineering officers who, in addition to their regular duties, will check temperatures, humidity, noise levels, and wearing qualities of each material and facility under test. Today, the academy is outlined only in the site's half-formed roads and utility lines and in the drawing plans and model designs of its creators. But to the first class of cadets, training in Lowry Field's temporary facilities 60 miles north, the new academy, rising in the shadow of Pikes Peak, is the goal for their last year of cadet life. With graduation in 1959 on the parade ground beneath the Rampart Range, where they will solemnly inaugurate a tradition of leadership which the wings of the Air Force will share with the Army and Navy Academies in securing the future of the United States of America. <laughs>